Well, good morning, and welcome to A Few Godly Men, Volume 2, with your man, Pastor Reverend Artel Bell, the Senior, brought to you today by Spirit of Excellence Ministries, and we're moving to a new volume and A Few Godly Men, and I know many of us, if you had the opportunity to watch Volume 1, really, really lean into those scriptures and what God has done and how he created men. But as we go through this process, we're going to also identify humankind, mankind. The Word of God says that he created them, male and female, and that he gave them authority and dominion. But when the sin nature showed up, God had to deal with the sin nature and the blame game shows up and anxiety shows up and depression shows up. But hey, let me share this with you. God is always ever present to be with us if we choose him. So, and the first one was Seth. And when we look at chapter five, as we begin volume two, it really deals with the generations that, that came out of Adam. The very first few verses, and we'll read that in a second, establishes not just Adam's holiness, but Adam's humanity and Adam's sin nature. We all have all of these things that make us up. So let's start. In, verse, in chapter 5, verse 1, you'll see these words. And we're going to go over this as a summary because we don't have time to go to pull every verse but I want you to walk away with the understanding of what God is saying about us. So Genesis 5 in the first book that Moses wrote, it says this, this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness and God made he him male and female, he created them and he blessed them and he called their name Adam in the day that they were created. And Adam lived, lived and 130 years and begat a son of his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begat Seth were 800 and he begat sons and daughters and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Now, ability, God's accountability and God's mercy. And God has given us purpose and destiny. And even when we falter, even as human beings who can be flawed, God still has a desire to make us whom he intended us to be. Hallelujah. If you go through the chapter, chapter five, you're going to see all of the genealogy that God created and all that produced after their own kind, male and female, sons and daughters. So basically what he's saying here is that what Moses is trying to get us to understand is God created Adam and his likeness and his image. He gave him dominion, he gave him authority, he gave him responsibility, he gave him accountability. He gave him a gift known as his, as woman, as Adam called her to be, because she came out of man. So man was first, woman was second, but woman came out of man. So technically you can say, hey, they were created at the same time, but the manifestation of the woman didn't show up until God decided he needed a help me. So when we look at that, God is establishing the importance of both people. So he blessed them. He told them to be fruitful and, and multiply, to replenish the earth and to subdue it. So he gave them accountability and responsibility. Again, go back to volume one and you'll see how sin showed up. You'll see how the blame game showed up you see how accountability showed up and that how man began to dodge God, run from God, hide from God, which allowed them to run towards the enemy. So let's look at this. 
So God, we see in this term in this in this story that God looks at this, and God in this in chapter five outlines from Adam all the geology to get us to Noah. And Noah is going to be important as we move forward because Noah was a man that God saw and God felt was a blessing. So in each of these geologies and each of these sons and daughters and being given in marriage and having marriage and having more offspring and having more children and replenishing the earth, one of the difficult things that happened was man became further and further from God. Man became individuals who believed in their own way and their own thoughts. So even in this time when you will see God say, and he lived 900 years and he had sons and he begot daughters and they begot wives and they begot husbands and they continued time after time after time. But I'm going to pick, I'm going to focus in on three members of this genealogy. Adam had a son named Cain who was first. He had a son named Abel. That, then he had another son named, named Seth that created a new line because as the, as the world became further and further away from God, as sin became, became began, to, began to be spread, when righteousness was, was also not being followed or not being followed in the fullness of God, God had to recreate a, a, a person or a family that would walk and live God's way. So when Cain killed Abel because Abel gave God the more perfect sacrifice, Cain passed that DNA on to all that came after him. When Adam sinned and fall short of the glory of God, he passed that on through the generations. But Adam also passed on righteousness. He passed on the love of God. So in every human being going forward, you have both the love of God, the potential to love God and honor God, but you also have the potential to listen to the enemy and fall victim to sin and not follow God in the fullness of his image. So as time proceeded, God gave Adam and Eve another son called Seth, and Seth brought had son who had Enos who came through his line, and Enos was the one who brought men back to loving and worshiping God. Not to the fullness of Adam, but he reminded them that they had a God and that God loved them and that God had desires for them. And that's what we face today in our society. Hey, we're surrounded by the enemy. We're surrounded by spiritual wickedness in high places. We're surrounded by man thinking he is a God. We're surrounded by people believing they can do what they want and there be no consequences. But hey, God always shows up and he gives us people that he can show us who he is. Seth lived and begot Enos. Enos lived till he was 870 years old and Enos brought back, brought back um, revival in the land and brought people back to see who God is. So when God created revival through Seth, Seth had, had uh, Enos. Enos was the one who taught us to, hey, come back to God. Enos' line produces a person named Enoch. And Enoch, according to the scripture, let's look at it. Verse 21, and Enoch lived 65 years and begot Mephsah, and Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 360 years, he begot sons and he begot daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God to come. Look, when you look at this genealogy, if you go back and you read um, chapter 5, you're going to see all these people who lived 900 years and they all had sons and daughters and, and they were marrying and they were giving a marriage. 
and they were getting further and further away from God. It wasn't that they didn't have God, they were getting further and further away from God. And that's kind of how we are today. Some of us know God, we went through uh, salvation, we were raised in the church, we were raised to love God, and we got further and further away from God. We drifted because of culture, we drifted because of society, we drifted because of the enemy would put thoughts in our, in our minds and imaginations because the word of God says, as a man think it, so is he. So as we got further and further away from God, we got less and less in his word, less and less in his commandments, less and less in his grace, less and less in his truth, and has, has created a society that is confused, that is chaotic. And this is exactly the same society that Enoch lived with and lived in. But God, again, always gives us people that can show us the right way to go. Enoch, Enoch walked with God and he begot children who he trained to walk with God. He created sons and daughters that he created to walk with God. Enoch didn't live 900. He didn't live the, the, the years that Canaan lived or the years that Adam lived. God saw Enoch and he saw, his, saw him. And Enoch, when he was 365 years, did not taste death. Enoch walked with God and he was not. Meaning God took him, not that he died. And every other person that we see in the Bible, death shows up. God says to Enoch, God says to Enoch, he was not for God took him. So God looked at Enoch and he saw the things that he put in Adam being manifested in the earth. And he gave him the benefit of taking him and not having to endure 900 years of the things that were going on around him. Isn't it just like God? that he took us in the midst of our drama, in the midst of our situation, and yet he still blesses us and blesses mankind. Then we get to the fact that Noah shows up. Noah shows up and God says unto God that he was a descendant of Seth, who was the man that Eve had in her late age to replace Abel, who was killed by Cain. Look, God knows the society that we're in. And God knows that man can be corrupt. And God knows that man can still be saved. Jesus put it this way. Jesus said when he was on the cross to get us saved, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. In our society today, there are people who do not know what they do. And it is up to us as believers, as the descendants of Noah, as the descendants of Enoch, as the descendants of Adam, as the descendant of Seth. It is up to us who have chosen Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to forgive people because they don't know what they do. They make decisions. They make choices. They create theologies, they create philosophies that may not align to God's word. And we have to be ones who pray, who believe God, that we can be walking epistles read of man and that we can bring all mankind to the kingdom. Yes, there are those who won't make it to the kingdom, but it is our desire to reflect the heart of God and it's God's heart that none should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. Hey, may God bless you. Hey, may God keep you. Hey, may God prosper you. And hey, we pray and we believe in faith because that's God's plan for us. In episode two, we're going to look at God having to come in accountability and how Noah had to do the things that God has requested him to do because he found favor with God. Hey, 
May the favor of God protect all of us and surround us. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a smile upon you. So in volume one, we concluded with Adam, with Eve, with the serpent, with Cain, with Abel, with Enos, 